Good afternoon, and welcome to this Bright Risk webinar on risk-adjusted machinery and field operation costs. I'm John Hewitt, and uh, we'll be offering today's webinar from the UW campus, where I am a ranch and farm management specialist in the Department of Agricultural and Applied Economics. I'll just go ahead and get started here with our webinar. We'll cover Primarily with this webinar, the machine risk calculator tool and the accompanying guide that we've developed to go along with that. And these tools are designed to help you make risk adjusted estimates of the cost for individual machines as well as implement and for field operations where we would combine uh, power units with any implements to do a, or complete a field operation. So this tool is uh, developed primarily to help producers estimate the cost of machinery ownership as well as the operation of those machine items and to, to help you get a feel for the sensitivity of those costs to uncertainty in the future. Uh, it's primarily developed off of an update uh, of previous bulletin and software that have been developed here at the university, uh, but we've thrown into this mix the added dimension of risk with this particular version of the tool. So what we're really doing with this uh, software uh, is estimating the cost for various machine resources. And those costs can be grouped into two broad categories. There are ownership or fixed costs, which as depicted by the line on, the, on this chart there, uh, do not vary with level of activity, whether we look at acres farmed or hours used. Basically, those fixed costs are considered to be a constant over the life of the machine, as compared to this group of uh, in the second line is depicted is called operating or variable costs, which we typically would expect to increase uh, as uh, the use of the machine increases. We'll look at the little further depth uh, of each of those categories, but essentially the two of them go together to add up to the total cost of operating that machine over its use and over its lifetime, uh, at, again, at various levels of activity, and we would increase, uh, expect it to increase as that level of activity uh, increases, whether that be within a particular year uh, over, or over its entire lifetime. So we'll briefly run through these different cost categories that we've mentioned in uh, in, in passing years of, in the broad grouping. Um, and we'll look at what the items are within those two groups, uh, give a little more detail about what they include as well as uh, what options we have for uh, coming up with an estimate of what those cost items might be. Um, and I might point out that as we go along, um, as indicated with this uh, graphic on the screen, we've created a guide that goes along with uh, the, the software tool itself about 26 pages and it has the details explaining what are included in each of these cost categories, how the cost is being calculated within the software, as well as a number of different supporting tables are included in the, in the guide itself, um, which include uh, factors and so on that are helpful uh, for estimating various cost items. And we'll look at those, some of those as we go along. I might also point out that we created a supporting uh, web page that accompanies this software and the guide, which has links to various equipment manufacturers. Uh, and with uh, those sites and links that are included there, it's possible to go in and get uh, the various list prices for various power units, as well as implements, uh, and uh, can, can be used in that way to estimate the cost for uh, various ones of these categories at expense. So let's go ahead and start off with uh, taxes as the, the first cost item we're looking at within the, the fixed cost grouping. Um, and basically what we're looking at there are per personal property taxes that are charged on various machinery and equipment that are owned by a farm or ranch and uh, used in the production of various enterprise activities. Typically that's estimated as a percentage of the uh, purchase price or Current value, depending on where you are, um, and which state, and so on, as to what uh, basis of the county uh, or the state might be assessing those taxes. 
Housing is another uh, fixed cost that we that we calculate in. in other words, the ownership costs for various machine items is basically the cost of keeping a machine uh, used in the production protected from uh, the effects of weather. Some people will make, try to make the argument that, well, they aren't actually uh, putting their machine items in inside or inside some sort of a building uh, or covering them in any way, and yet we all would think fairly readily recognize that if we don't cover a machine, its exposure to the elements actually diminishes its useful life over time, and so it's probably appropriate to calculate some kind of a cost, whether we house the uh, machinery item or not. Uh, the final one and within this group uh, we typically look at is called insurance, um, and this would be the cost of insuring the machine or the equipment item uh, from from the possibility of loss, loss coming from possibly theft or primarily fire is what we would worry about, but certainly vandalism could be another cost in terms of loss of use of that machine, and many people actually carry uh, insurance against that loss. So these three items taken together, taxes, housing, and insurance, are typically grouped together and uh, often referred to within uh, within uh, machinery calculators as being the THI uh, group or rate. Uh, and as you can see on the on the screen, we have a table that's included within the guide, also is included in the software, that typically uh, provides uh, a rate of 2% that's been assigned to various kinds of machines and equipment items. Clearly, if you know what your tax rate is and it's, it's something different, you could enter that into the software. Uh, as well as what you would figure would be an appropriate rate for housing or insurance, depending on what you actually are putting out in terms of dollars of, of expense to bring that item onto your schedule um, for insurance, or uh, there's a specific building that you would store you know, a particular item in, uh, easily could be included, and, and 2% may not be the appropriate rate for your situation, but is offered as a typical rule of thumb uh, for these types of expenses. Okay, the next uh, next grouping of, uh, of, of uh, full excuse me fixed costs or ownership costs we typically would look at would be a, an interest charge we would assign to uh, the machinery item, uh, typically referred to as opportunity cost, uh, with the idea that where you purchase an individual machine item, it ties up some kind of capital uh, that's been invested there, whether you borrow that capital or if it's your own capital that you pay for a machine completely out of uh, your own uh, your own uh, savings or earnings, and in which case there it's appropriate to charge an interest rate on that uh, capital that's been invested in the machine item or as machinery as a group of items on your balance sheet. And uh, so a typical interest rate would be charged, uh, would be one that you would use as an alternative investment rate. Uh, so what you would expect to earn with that capital if you, for example, were to put it into a savings account or some other kind of an investment. Um, another charge uh, within the ownership group uh, would be depreciation. And basically that represents the uh, reduction in the value of the machine as you take it uh, into your ownership, whether it's brand new or if it's a partially used machine. Once you take ownership of it, uh, that investment in that machine is viewed to wear out or, or to diminish. The investment it diminishes over the life of the machine, such that at the point the machine is done, uh, in terms of your using of it, uh, would reach some salvage value or ending value. And so the, the change between what you pay for the machine and uh, that salvage value is what we call depreciation. Usually within uh, this type of calculation, uh, we would look at that as probably smoothly or, or in a linear fashion declining in value over time. Uh, but it might, and there are other alternative methods of calculating uh, the, the depreciation cost. Um, this, this software uses a linear approach, so it's an equal amount of, of machine value that uh, is expected or calculated to go away uh, year by year. And as you can see from the formula that we're using as depicted on the screen here, uh, 
is not only including the purchase price as well as the useful life, but we're including that salvage value as an amount um, that's being estimated as being left over at the end of its useful life. We have a separate formula for calculating that salvage value or ending value. Uh, this is being shown on the screen at this point, and it includes a number of different uh, cost factors uh, that we use to estimate that value. Um, those values, uh, cost factors, are actually included in the guide, and we're going to take a look at those here in a minute. But as you can see, uh, the salvage value is estimated using the purchase price again, these cost factors, the useful life, and then the estimated hours of annual use, how much we would actually expect to use that machine uh, year by year over its useful life. So salvage value taken together with, again, the purchase price and what we expect in terms of life of an estimate of years for various machine items uh, is used to estimate that depreciation cost in total. So let's take a look now at how the software is actually used to estimate these uh, various values. Uh, if we open the software uh, after the initial screen, we get this listing of uh, various categories of machinery items that the software can be used to estimate the cost of, ranging from what we call powered equipment to various implement items. And you can see we can actually have up to three different implements in the software. It can also be used to estimate costs for vehicles, powered irrigation equipment, and non-powered irrigation equipment. And then finally, the last item is we can use uh, various definitions for powered equipment and or implements to define various field operations, and uh, using that category can estimate uh, field operation cost as well as doing the risk analysis for that operation. So if we step forward and take a look at the powered equipment category, uh, we would select the checkbox there, and once we've done that, it will open a new window, or basically pops up this listing um, for the powered equipment items. We have one already entered as a default. Uh, obviously, we can make changes here, or the software wouldn't be of much value to us. But basically, uh, the uh, yellow shaded regions within each of these uh, these input uh, forms uh, are, the, are the things that we would need to enter uh, to define the various machine items. So in this case, we've entered a description of a wheel tractor uh, with various different equipment options that are described there. Uh, we have the purchase price, the year quoted, uh, I guess as honest as far as when we got that price. Uh, we have uh, useful life in terms of what the total number of hours of the machine would be in our estimation over uh, the years that we plan to keep it. And then uh, with that uh, broken out, we have also got an estimate of the annual use in terms of hours we would plan to use that machine in our operation. We also have an estimated life in terms of years, and uh, we use that uh, within our calculations as well to coupled with the uh, number of hours uh, to calculate some of these costs. We also have these cost factors, uh, both in terms of estimating the depreciation costs and salvage value, but also repair factors, uh, this opportunity uh, cost rate, taxes, housing and insurance rate, uh, fuel price and uh, type, as well as the uh, PTO horsepower and percent load factor. We'll go into some of these operating cost factors here in a minute. Um, uh, if we look at uh, how, how we might actually get some of those uh, various factors, you can see over here to the right, if we, for example, look at the cost factors, we have a question mark and an I uh, icon there at the right. If we click on uh, the question mark, it actually will pop up a definition for each of the cost factor items. So, for example, here, it's listing cost factors 1, 2, and 3 are used to estimate depreciation costs. And uh, we can look those up in the guide in Table 4. And uh, we can also, it says, makes a note here to click on the I button to view a table of those cost factors within uh, the software itself. So click on the I button. Actually see what one of those cost factor uh, listings would be. Here in this case, we're indicating tractors. And we can see for various uses, or excuse me, for various estimates of annual use and expected uh, total life in terms of hours or miles, um, and uh, so many uh, years of life, we have various different repair factors and cost factors uh, 
that we might use to estimate if we don't have a better idea of what might uh, be our own experience in terms of some of these costs, uh, use those factors to estimate the cost from the machinery item. So again, we fill that table out uh, with the, and define that tractor. And uh, once we've got those factors in, we can actually see within the table that's available uh, in the software what the ownership costs are. So the top section there, it uh, basically repeats what we've entered in the table uh, for the definition of the machine. Uh, and then in the table below that, we can see what the estimated costs are, uh, both on a per hour basis as well as the annual costs. So here on the left in the blue shaded area, we've got depreciation, opportunity cost, as well as the taxes, housing, and insurance rate uh, for this particular tractor. Over on the right, we have depreciation on a per hour basis, um, opportunity cost, and taxes, housing, and insurance on a per hour basis. I can't overemphasize what the, uh, that you take special care in estimating what the maximum life is or the useful life. Here in the case, uh, we've got listed on this uh, repeated definition information at the top. We have maximum life is 20 years and the annual use is 1,000 hours. Obviously, those two numbers are going to be very important to coming up with the cost on a per hour basis might be because it's basically taking these total annual costs and dividing by that annual use to come up with uh, what the cost per hour would be on a, again, on a per hour basis. Later, we'll see how we can use those to estimate a cost per acre. So again, I want to really emphasize that you, that you take some care in estimating what the cost, what the number of hours of annual use would be, um, and uh, and also over here we have hours to wear out, which is the 12,000 hours total uh, life of the machine, because again, those will be used to estimate those costs per hour basis. And if you enter uh, a, a, a too high or too low a number, it's going to make a great difference in terms of what those costs would be. So once we've defined the ownership cost, the next category we said was operating or variable cost. And uh, that category of cost includes a number of different items, fuel and lube, uh, repair, maintenance, and so on. We'll run through each of those here in a minute. Uh, fuel and lube, we're primarily estimating, obviously, the fuel costs, so whether it's gasoline, diesel, or in the case of powered irrigation equipment, we also have the possibility of entering uh, liquid uh, propane, fuel source, uh, but it also includes other items that go along with fuel, which uh, here we're listing oil, the filters, the grease, and also the labor necessary for fueling the uh, equipment item, uh, lubricating the machinery before use or as we use it within the machine field, uh, and so on and so forth. So this category of fuel and lube uh, is an important category to make sure we get everything included in, included in that estimate besides just the cost of the fuel itself. So typically the way this is done within the software is we enter the price of fuel and then a factor is used to estimate what the uh, the uh, lubrication costs are. You see down here at the bottom is 1.15. 1. 1. Basically that factor is going to take the uh, fuel cost itself and then factor it up by a, by a factor of 15% to include the, the lube cost, that may or may not be correct uh, in your case, so you want to take a look at that. Uh, but in addition, we want to make a special point here to make to uh, emphasize that setting what the load factor is for these various power uh, equipment items it, uh, might be is a very important factor. Uh, the load is used to estimate the horsepower uh, that is being used. Uh, for various field operations. Uh, and so you need to think about when estimating the load, uh, what you'll be using that machine or that power unit uh, for various, uh, depending on the field operations, whether it be uh, livestock operations or uh, tillage operations, etc. You need to think about what the load factor is on average for that machine. Uh, because if you set the load factor at a particularly high rate, thinking about uh, plowing, for example, versus uh, using a particular loader tractor for uh, you know, loading manure or some kind of uh, a light uh, harrowing or whatnot. If you enter the load factor for plowing, obviously it's going to assign a much higher fuel cost 
and a higher lubrication cost over the life of the machine and the software than would be appropriate if the machine isn't used for plowing all the time. On the other hand, if a particular tractor or power unit is used for really heavy work, uh, maybe that load factor should be set up to a fairly high level to, again, make sure that you're getting an appropriate fuel cost assigned to the uh, operation which is being used. Again, just a caution in terms of what that load factor is that you use there. And obviously, the fuel cost is one that you will need to think about. What would be an average rate, uh, not only for the particular year that you're looking at, but also perhaps over the lifetime of the machine in terms of the fuel cost uh, and, the, and the appropriate cost. Uh, for within and across various years. Repair and maintenance uh, may be obvious, but it basically is the repair and maintenance costs, which are going to come from wear and use of the machine, uh, whether it be due to part failure uh, or routine maintenance policies that you may have. Uh, for example, cha changing out bearings on disc uh, plows on an annual basis or on a periodic basis every three years and changing them all, whether they actually need it or not. Um, so uh, you'll need to you know, think about what is an appropriate rate for your own situation. Keep also in mind that it would include both uh, your own uh, labor, if you do your own uh, maintenance and repair uh, activities, but if you use off-site or off-farm uh, maintenance and repair services, uh, that it would also include those costs, both for labor as well as the parts and any markup. So, again, within the, the guide, we have this description of how repair costs are being assessed uh, basically is based on a repair factor uh, one and repair factor two that you can use uh, tabled values from the guide. Uh, you'll also notice that it's based upon the purchase price as well as uh, factored into the hours of annual use uh, over uh, its useful life and uh, so you'll need to think about these repair costs in terms of the life of the machine and what is appropriate uh, to be assigned again and expected for the use of the machine and the application that you have in mind. So once we take uh, those fuel and lube and repair and maintenance costs into account, uh, we can look at the table values and see uh, both repair uh, costs on, a per, on an annual basis as well as uh, fuel and lube costs uh, for the life of the machine as we expect to, to use it. And then again, using the annual use estimate, of, in this case, a thousand hours per year, we can estimate that the cost per hour are, uh, are, and what those would be in terms of repair and fuel and oil. Again, the total cost uh, on an annual basis, in this case, $51,000, is essentially uh, used in the division of a thousand hours of annual use is what we're expecting and to arrive at that total cost per hour, in this case, $51.73 for this example tractor. So again, I can't overemphasize that you, that you spend a fair amount of time thinking about how many hours the machine would be used, and what kinds of use in terms of load factors, fuel costs, and so on and so forth, to come up with an as accurate as possible estimate of that machine item at, on your operation. Okay, now moving forward from the estimate of the cost of operating the machine, whether it be the power unit or a particular implement, uh, and now moving forward to think about what the total operation costs are on a per hour basis. And to do that, we'll need to estimate the cost for a couple of uh, other items uh, that, that factor in here. The first one is probably fairly obvious, is the operating inputs, or those inputs that we use uh, in the application of of various kinds of agricultural chemicals, uh, whether we're seeding, inoculants, uh, fertilizer, if we're baling, twine that would be an input item, uh, chemicals, etc. Those kinds of inputs that we use within various field operations. Uh, within the software, we're able to enter both the use per acre as well as the cost of that item on a per unit of uh, basis in which we purchase it. We'll look at that here in a minute. Um, the next category of cost would be the labor cost. Typically within uh, agricultural operation, they have labor of various different types, whether it's day labor, hired labor, uh, or owner-operator labor, labor. In this case, we're talking about machine labor, or the operator labor uh, that would go into operating this machine, maybe including servicing it uh, in terms of uh, fuel and lubing, so on and so forth. And so what 
want to do is enter an appropriate rate, uh, and we may pay a little higher rate for this type of labor versus other kinds of labor that we have uh, operating on the farm and ranch. We need to think carefully about that type of rate that we would use and what would be appropriate in terms of our machinery and field operations. And the final item is a return to management. Uh, if we want to include that as a return on our investment or what we would typically figure as an appropriate factor to be earned, if we were thinking about a custom operation or doing work for someone else, what would be an appropriate charge in addition to the other cost items that we're including. Uh, so a, you could look at it as the cost of management services to uh, to plan and oversee the field operations or perhaps a return for ownership of those various machine items, etc., but some kind of a return to management, and in this case, it's entered as a cost per hour of uh, field operation. So if we look again at the software, uh, these are the uh, entry blanks that we use for entering uh, the uh, operation uh, in input items, so we can describe what the various inputs are, and we can allow, uh, software allows for entry of up to four different operating inputs. So again, it could be a seed and fertilizer, for example, in a planting operation. Uh, it may be a chemical uh, or maybe more than one type of chemical that we're applying in a particular pass, um, it could be twine, etc. Those kinds of operating inputs that we do use. And then how many units of use would we have per acre uh, and what the cost is on a per unit basis. So if we buy chemicals uh, per gallon, what the cost uh, would be in terms of cost per gallon. And then how many gallons we would be applying per acre that would be the appropriate entries there. Operator labor, again, dollars per hour, and what would be an appropriate rate. In this case, we're using $15 as an example we'll be looking at here in a second. And then finally, return to management. I think we have an entry here uh, that, we, that we put in in our example, but basically, again, uh, if we want to assign some kind of a return for ownership or operation, overseeing, et cetera, uh, for the field operation, we can enter a rate there. And a final uh, set of definitions we'll need for calculating the, uh, the field capacity or how many acres we can accomplish in a particular field operation, typically referred to as field capacity. And so a number of different factors we need to put in here, speed, uh, field efficiency, as well as implement width to estimate that field capacity in a, as a factor in total. We look at the software, basically we enter those uh, in these three blanks to define the various operations. Uh, so if it's a, in this case, it's, it's a tractor pulling a moldboard plow. Uh, we estimate the width of this plow at seven and a half feet. The width, the speed is about four and a half miles an hour on average. And then the efficiency, we're estimating at 85%. With that, we get a rate uh, or Accomplishment for in terms of acres per hour at 3.48. Obviously, if we change any of those factors, it's going to give us uh, another diff, uh, resulting rate per acre. And perhaps more importantly, with the software, we're able to enter various rates here to see what difference that might make in terms of the cost on a per acre or a per hour of operation basis. Um, so let's step forward and take a look at that. If, uh, but before we do that, I wanted to point out that these various factors, we've kind of glossed over this number of different factors uh, used to estimate some of these uh, operation costs. So if we look at that, uh, the question mark and the, uh, the I button give us definitions as well as some informational tables. But I wanted to point out here we have a third icon uh, called a document uh, icon, which we can click on. And if you're not familiar with what typical accomplish, accomplishment rates might be for field operations or planting and so on, uh, we've included a table that, in, that has been derived from a number of different custom operator surveys we've uh, completed over a number of years, uh, four separate surveys, in fact, which list various different uh, tillage operations, field operations, as well as harvest and planting operations where we're listing what uh, custom operators have reported that they typically are using as far as the size of the power unit, the uh, size of the implement, as well as the cost, uh, or the, excuse me, the accomplishment rate in terms of acres per 10-hour day uh, that they've 
these operators could complete using those kinds of machine items. Those may be helpful in terms of estimating your own equipment costs. So again, if we step forward here and uh, use these estimates that we've entered for this particular moldboard plowing operation, if we uh, look at the tables for the individual items, we can see that the tractor had a total cost per acre of uh, $51.73 per hour uh, in that field operation or any field operation, keep in mind that the estimate of the tractor cost is across all uses, so it's not necessarily the use tied to this particular implement. If we estimated the cost for a moldboard plow, in this case, it turned out to be $36.05 per hour. Um, again, it's the moldboard plow perhaps used behind a number of different power units. Got to, but what we've done is estimated the, mold, the cost of the moldboard plow in general uh, in plowing for our operation, as we see, uh, might be appropriate to uh, appropriate cost for estimates for various uh, cost categories. If we added those up, we could see that they add up to about what, $87 or thereabouts um, in total. Basically, in the field operation cost section of the software, you can see that it actually adds those up. The, uh, in the table that's available on a per hour basis, $51.73 for the tractor, $36.05 for the moldboard plow adds up to $87.77. It also breaks that out on the various uh, cost factor uh, <clears throat> items, so you can see what the total is, for example, for depreciation versus repairs and so on. And you can also see that if we had defined a couple of other implements to go along in this field operation, it would have included those as well. The value of this section of the software, though, is that it steps beyond that. It adds in these other operating uh, costs. So if we define various operating inputs, those would be added here on a cost-per-hour basis. Uh, we did define operated labor at $15 per hour, and you can see that's been added. And if we'd added in uh, cost in terms of return to management, that also would be included here in this table. However, in the way we've defined the operation, we basically have $102.77 as the estimated cost on a per hour basis for moldboard plowing, again, given our definitions. We step forward then um, and use, it. I guess I'm pointing out here, that using the uh, rate in terms of accomplishment per hour, 3.4 3 acres per hour as the accomplishment rate, we can actually recalculate that table of costs now on a per acre basis. So the cost for the tractor is now calculated at $14.88 per acre. Uh, Moldboard plow at $10.37 per acre, giving us a total of $25.24 per acre. Uh, if we add to that what's now converted to a per acre cost of $4.31 for the operator labor, we get a $29.56 uh, estimate in terms of our moldboard plowing operation on a per acre basis. Again, uh, these costs are based on that rate per acre of accomplishment using that field capacity estimate. And in this case was 3 and 3.48 acres per hour. So the point there is that that accomplishment rate is very important in terms of what ends up being these costs on a per acre basis. Finally, and this is where the software is actually offer, uh, includes a, a really neat feature in the sense that we can, uh, we could go back and estimate using different uh, estimates of field capacity, for example, different speeds, uh, different equipment widths, maybe not so important, but efficiencies, factors. Uh, we could go back and enter different repair factors. We could go back and enter a different operator uh, costs on a per hour basis and get new estimates of a single number nature, like uh, we've come through and got $29.56 uh, per acre here, um, but how often would that actual value ever occur? Uh, my guess is probably almost never. Instead, what we would expect in as we make these estimates into the future is that that, that cost per acre is going to vary. So that's where this risk analysis comes in, is this variability in these various costs and what we would expect if we took a look at any one of those categories 
as far as what difference it makes in terms of a cost per hour or a cost per acre basis. What we've done is given a, a drop-down menu here that allows us to look at these various uh, cost factors or categories of cost within the software. So it allows us to look at variation in depreciation cost, opportunity cost, taxes, housing, and insurance cost, uh, repairs, fuel and oil, total operating input cost, uh, the operator labor cost, or return to management cost. So basically we're looking at each of these cost categories and, uh, and asking, well, what would happen if they vary? What difference would it make to our cost in terms of operating our machinery in this, in this particular field operation. So in this case, we're selecting fuel and oil costs. Once we've chosen that from the uh, drop-down menu, fuel and oil from that drop-down menu, it gives us what, is, what we had in the table as the most likely estimate in terms of dollars per hour for fuel and oil costs. In this case, it turned out to be $33.09. And what the software does is allows us to enter a value both for low and high. What do we expect? If we think $33.09 is the most likely value, maybe the average value, what do we expect that cost uh, to move between as far as a low and a high, or a max and min value, uh, over, over the life of this particular set of machinery? <clears throat> so... We've chosen $29.78 as the low value and $43.01 as the cost as a high value on a per, eight, on a per hour basis. Again, you can enter your own uh, entries there in terms of variation to try to get a feel for what would be the variation around that. But the idea is that we're not expecting exactly $33.09 year over year, but rather that we expect it to vary somewhat. It's somewhere between $29.78 and maybe upwards of $43.01 uh, over the life of operating this machine, uh, pairing, uh, and doing moldboard plowing. What is the result? Basically, you can hit a run uh, button uh, after entering those max and min values, and what it generates is a probability curve. So what this is doing is giving us a readout of the probabilities for various costs of fuel and oil expense, which is labeled there at the top of the, uh, of the chart, fuel and oil expense, on a per acre basis, allowing fuel and oil expense to vary and what we are getting as far as cost per acre for this field operation. And what would happen if we slide our cursor along this curve probability curve, at any particular point, it gives us a probability and a dollar cost. So in this case, we drive the cursor to the 50% mark, which we read off, a probability of 50% on, on the vertical scale at the left, we can see that it gives us $29.82. About 50% of the time, we would expect the cost of fuel and oil to be about $29.82. Not all that much different than on thirty-three dollars, and yet it uh, it is a better estimate of what we could expect going into the future, perhaps than that single estimate would be. In addition to that, if we move our cursor to the lower end, for example, we see that uh, it basically has a probability of zero percent chance of of fuel and oil expenses falling below twenty-eight dollars and sixty-three cents, based on our estimate. Or if we drive up here to the upper end of the curve, we see that basically there's a 100% chance of our fuel and oil expense falling below $31.88 on a uh, per acre basis. So again, there are other values we could read off of this probability curve, um, but basically it gives us a range now of what we could expect for fuel and oil expense to vary between, given our estimate of high and low, of somewhere between $28.63 per acre up to $31.88 per acre. So that may be quite helpful, uh, given lack of certainty about uh, what, what fuel and oil expenses might do over time. Uh, 
this maybe gives us a better feel for what our field operation costs on a per acre basis might be given a variation in that particular cost factor. The other thing that's kind of neat about this is we can go back and make a changed estimate. So, for example, if we change our high estimate, our maximum estimate of fuel and oil expense to $53.01 instead of uh, what we had before was $43.01, and we rerun our analysis, it gives us a different curve. So, although it's probably not uh, so obvious, it actually changes the shape of this curve, uh, and and uh, and in addition, it changes what the probability values and cost values would be for various points along that curve. So in this case, we could read off that at a 50% probability, uh, we have an expectation of about $30.20 for, for uh, our moldboard plowing operation versus a high of $34.24 up here at the upper end. We basically have a 100% probability of, of being below that value. Or at the low end, it's now suggesting that uh, it's moved up a bit, and we now have an estimate of, of $28.66. Uh, we have about a 0% probability of falling below that value. So again, this is a way of getting a feel for the variation in the, in the various cost factors, depending on which one we want to look at, entering a, a maximum and a minimum value for that particular factor. Um, as well as getting the probability and the range of uh, those values uh, over time, given uh, this particular operation. If we wanted to look at disking, for example, we could tie that factor to a, a disk implement that we would define, and in which case, we'd estimate costs for disking and uh, various fuel and, and oil cost variation around uh, what would be for a disking operation, for example. Uh, but again, it's a, this is a way of, of getting a feel for uh, the risk or variability in those cost factors uh, to get us to see just in, you know, not only what difference it makes, but also the impact in terms of the magnitude of difference uh, given our various estimates of changes in cost factors. So with that, I guess we're at our at the closing here. Uh, I just want to point out that this uh, this software and the accompanying guide are intended to be a useful tool for calculating the cost and ownering ownership of various kinds of power units as well as implements on both an annual or an hourly basis, depending on how, what information you uh, have to put into the software, can also be used to calculate the cost of field operations. And those operation costs can be done on a per hour or per acre basis. Finally, uh, the tool itself can be very helpful in analyzing the risk associated with owning and operating various machine items and accomplishing various kinds of field operations by using the risk analysis section of the tool. So I'd like to close by uh, thanking uh, all of our sponsoring institutions uh, and universities as well as the Risk Management Agency and the Right Risk Team for the opportunity to make this presentation. I'd also like to thank all of our participants in today's webinar. Uh, Hopefully, we'll give, we've given you some information that may be helpful uh, in your work as we use as you use this tool and the information that goes along with it to, to estimate machinery costs uh, for your operation. We hope to see you again in a future webinar. And until then, and for the Right Risk Team, I'm John Hewitt, signing off.